Okay, joining Maria and me to continue this conversation. You saw her earlier uh, with uh, the package that we rolled at the beginning of the show. She's with Save Northside STL, but she also lives in the home she is trying to save, and her family has since 1945. Uh, Charles Seta Taylor is with us. Thank you for being here. Thank Michael you. Allen, welcome back to the show. Director and architectural historian with the Preservation Research Office. Thanks for coming back, Michael. And also Otis Williams, Executive Director, St. Louis Development Corporation. So maybe before we uh, debate uh, and discuss, uh, l tell us what the city sees in this. Why is this such a, a high priority for the city of St. Louis? Why would you like to see this happen? Well, obviously, this is a gr great investment uh, in the north side in the sense that uh, the investment will be $1.6 billion uh, by the uh, federal government for the new facility. But it's also reinvestment in the neighborhood. And uh, mind we forget that, uh, that uh, Prudigo was uh, somewhat of a disaster uh, by the way that it came to an end with HUD. And so this is a time where we can make uh, uh, where the federal government can actually come back to the table and make good uh, on what should have happened at uh, the Puerto site. Uh, but this is also uh, one of those where we have significant taxes uh, in, in, in jeopardy here. So it's uh, 2.4, Maria mentioned the 2.4 that is the state for the city on an annual basis. But it's also for the state of Missouri about eight, a little over $8 million annually. So, so we would like obviously for it to stay in the city, but in Missouri for sure. Uh, as a, be a significant loss for the state. But it hasn't been without some controversy. Um, are you hearing the people uh, say that they don't want this? Almost definitely. We, we are having this conversation with almost everyone. And, uh, and so this is one of those where, uh, you know, Mrs. Taylor has been like the face of, uh, of, uh, this, uh, of, our, of our efforts in the sense that uh, we've had to always keep in mind people like her who will be impacted by uh, the acquisition of homes and of land that we have over there. So we're very forever mindful, but we have now the, the ability to be able to do a lot of things to make sure that the citizens uh, that are impacted or that we do everything we can to make that uh, uh, sort of an eased uh, uh, transition. And so we're talking with uh, either the owner or with the representatives of the owner, in the case of Ms. Taylor, with her, with her attorney, uh, to uh, talk about things that we can do. And what we are proposing, for instance, for Mrs. Taylor is hopefully we can uh, move her historic home to a new location that's not far from where it is. And, uh, you know, so in this one of those, uh, what we would do in that effort would be basically to move it, reconstruct it, and uh, basically make it look uh, uh, like new for the most part. So, we, you know, we have a lot of things in, in our toolbox. We intend to use all of them to make sure that uh, the citizens are made whole. He's talking about an, an ease, uh, as, ease as easily as possible of a transition. You spoke of your home. You said it's, it's not just our house, it's our heritage. What did you mean by that? I mean the fact that we've been in that neighborhood that 70 years. And we have listened to all the proposals down through the years that have not come to be. So we're a little bit hesitant about what would happen. And also the fact that the NGA has not selected it. So to us, it's like another carrot out there. You feel like you've heard of this before? If not this particular project, others. Um, land was sold and people left their homes expecting the neighborhood to grow and to improve, not to be blighted. And we believe that the city had something to do with that, that it wasn't all neighbors that just gave up. Those that sold their homes expected new homes and new things to come into the in neighborhood so that it would grow, not to just sit there. And we think that it's possible, and we have no assurance, that the NGA will select the north side. Meanwhile, if our homes are taken, you can't put them back and just go, oops, you know, it didn't work. We lost out. And so those homeowners that are there, residents that have been there, their grandparents bought those homes. They want to keep them. And there are elderly people in the area who have no debt. And they believe that the offers they're being made will not let them buy another home and remain debt free. You won't be able to get a comparable home somewhere else. Paid for. You might get another home, but you're going to now have a mortgage. They don't have mortgages now. And they don't look forward to that. 
nor do they look forward to moving into small senior citizen homes, which are our residents, much smaller than the homes they're in. Now they're comfortable where they are. You and it's a chance that we feel like it's just a chance we have to take as to whether the city is successful or not. I know you also have a lot of uh, sentimental value in that home too. Definitely. There were 13 of us that grew up in that home and they're scattered all over the United States. And they call it home. We call it the big house. And everybody that comes to St. Louis knows that they get to come, even little kids know that they can come to the big house. There are two stairwells in the house. And the kids have enjoyed just running up and down. Many of them live in homes where they've never even seen stairs. You know, if you have wherever you live, there are no stairs, let alone two pair that will take you all the way to the third floor. And you're welcome there. There are toys there. There are pictures there of the grandparents and the great parents. So do you and the people in your neighborhood trust the city? We would like to, but not really, because the experiences we've had have proven that they have not always been trustworthy. So, 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 so th this is, I call it a new day. And so mm -hmm. uh, what I always want to say is that uh, we are at this and we are, we are committed to ensuring that uh, we make all of the uh, uh, citizens whole. And so what the initial uh, offers that we've had out uh, may not necessarily be, as Ms. Taylor described, uh, the one that would make them whole, but what we ask the people to do for it to us is to re report back to us, give us a counter offer, if you will, and then we will work with them to get to where they potentially you know, need to be and also to make sure that they have a, a place where they don't have another mortgage. Uh, so uh, there, there, are, there are a lot of, there's a long way to go with some of the homeowners. You know, right now we, we know that we have 109 homeowners in that area and that uh, we have uh, an agreement with over 50 of them already and that we're working with the others. Uh, so, I mean, there, there are a number of, of uh, pro I said property owners, that uh, should be the way I should ca categorize it. Uh, so it's 109 property owners out of the 551 parcels that we need to purchase. And so uh, we, have a, we are making great progress at this point uh, in uh, getting the acquisitions, but we're very, er forever mindful of being, uh, uh, you know, concerned about the outcome for each of the citizens, and so I, I hear Mrs. Taylor. In fact, I, 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 I think I told her this when I first met her, that you know she reminds me of family member, and so I, you know I, I don't want to do anything that's going to injure her, but I also know that we have a need to be able to. Uh, basically assemble this land to save the jobs uh, here in the city and so which is why we came up with the with the idea that we would uh, because she has uh, told me many times at least I've heard her say this uh, that the house is historic and she as she describes family coming back to it we'd like to be sure that we can um, pick that house up and move it to another location Michael this is not a new point of conflict in modern life eminent domain, whether it's better for the greater good. In this case, though, it's not just the 47 homes or the 47 families. There's a petition that North, uh, Save Northside has got going that the last I saw it had over 90,000 people had signed it. What, what's at stake from the preservationist point of view, from the historian point of view? Well, as a historian, you know, I keep listening to this conversation about eminent domain and purchasing. I'm taken back a lot further than even you know Paul McKee's promise in 2009, which was at that point to do infill housing in that mm -hmm. part of St. Louis place. And let, he said everyone who wants to stay can stay mm -hmm. in that part of the neighborhood. So this is, this is a big surprise. But I go further back to, to Pruitt Igo. Maybe I look at it a little differently than, than Otis does because I think what was at Pruitt Igo before Pruitt Igo? 25 blocks of a neighborhood. And the city's land clearance for redevelopment agency went through and bought out the property mm -hmm. owners. You know, some of them were slumlords, but a lot were African-American business owners and homeowners. And then the city continued that um, in Mill Creek Valley. And then even on the site of NGA in the 1960s under model cities, a thousand houses were bought and torn down. In the 1980s, the cities had, had a great plan for a business park on that same site. In the 1990s under Mayor Bosley, it was a golf course. That's and right. then McKee and now NGA. And it's in the process, we've gone from a city of 900,000 to 300 something thousand. 
a city that was prosperous and wealthy to a city that now has to mortgage buildings to buy land for needed mm -hmm. public works projects. I don't think the approach of land assemblage historically has panned out to create jobs or revenues or enrich everyone. And it seems like St. Louis Place only really became a problem when it became a black neighborhood. Well, he says it's a new day. Do people believe that? Uh, to me, it seems like an old day. Uh, the new day seemed to be when Paul McKee said, because everyone thought he was going to do the same thing. Yeah. Look right. at that part of the neighborhood with some big project like NGA. And when he came publicly uh, and brought to the Board of Aldermen and the mayor this idea to do infill and something sensitive in that part of the neighborhood, it seemed to, it sat seemed to be a new day. And now we've gone back so, on that. So it is a new day in the sense that we are looking at uh, the kind of uh, development that Michael is describing all around that area. But this is an opportunity where we were able to look at the, the land that is controlled and the ability to assemble the 100 acres that was needed in order to find a home. As, as, as we've, we've talked about St. Louis, it's only 61 square miles, but being able to then find a contiguous land that could fulfill the need or the requirement that was being asked of us, that was one of the locations. And so uh, uh, that may, may have been uh, early on because I was not associated with the, with the early, uh, early project, but have been for the last uh, few years and uh, that's, that's why I say it's a new day. Is, because, is it just because I'm involved and I want to make sure that we do it uh, correctly. So, so is it, can, will anything happen if you don't have a commitment from NGA? If you, if you come to terms with Ms. Taylor uh, through her attorney and, and about her home and NGA backs out, what happens? Well, what we're looking at is an option. And so what we are saying is that we are not, we are not committed to buying the homes if the NGA, well, I say we're not committed. We are looking for options, and we will execute those options if we are selected. Otherwise, uh, the citizens are able to stay in their homes. One thing I've seen come up, and Maria, jump in here, because, if you, if we, because I think this is something from my, your reporting I've seen, that uh, not only do you need the land, but you need something, the development rights. Can you explain that at all? I don't want to get too lost in the weeds here, but do you have to purchase, is there more than just physical land you have to purchase from Mr. McKee? Well, th these are things that we are negotiating uh, currently, and so, uh, but part of the discussion is obviously uh, the, the land that we need to purchase, but also uh, the rights that were previously approved. We need to be sure that those are, you know, that we have uh, that uh, legally uh, taken care of. And so that is a consideration uh, later, but it's part of a discussion that we're having as far as the, ne the negotiations. I would add, you know, just listening to the Board of Aldermen and all the aldermen, many of them supporting this loan, saying, you know, very negative things about Mr. McKee and his project. I don't really know if the redevelopment rights uh, need to be purchased as much as rescinded by the Board of Aldermen. It seems like there might be a majority of votes there to just simply amend the redevelopment agreement and exempt that. You know, there is a little bit of a new day I'm hearing in, in the fact that the city only wants options. I think that's a great benefit to not actually displace people. But then there's this looming question. Well, okay, we don't get NGA. What comes next? And will that also threaten the same people who've been threatened for the last half century? What's, gonna, what's, gonna, what's it going to look like around there? Would this be a walled compound where they come in for eight hours a day and leave? Or would there, there be some, do you see a future where they can walk to lunch somewhere? No, you know, the one thing that's ongoing currently, and uh, we're working uh, throughout the, the area, there, there are several things that have occurred recently. One is a, a choice neighborhood planning grant where we're working with the citizens around the area so that we can plan what does it look like around the NGA site. Uh, we've also, uh, the area's been also designated as a promise zone, so beginning at Del Mar going north all the way to Ferguson actually, uh, the, the uh, federal government has designated it as a promise zone, so we're using that to leverage to get grants to be able to do a lot of other things uh, there. And uh, as you know, the city has already been designated as a strong city, strong community, so we're using all those tools to try to facilitate uh, getting uh, quality redevelopment all around it. And it's one of those requirements that uh, the NGA uh, has as well, which is that they don't want to be on an island. They want to be sure that some, some, some other things are going to happen around it. And so we're, we're, we're targeting to make other things happen. Ms. Taylor, we have about 30 seconds left. I, I want to get a final thought from you. Any optimism or, or, or are you committed to fighting this to the, the bitter end? Uh, he mentioned choice development. I believe Paul McKee is involved in that. 
I was at a uh, meeting that was held. And is that a deal breaker? Is, the, is, is just the very nature of Paul McKee a deal breaker for you and the people you live with? Because live near? we have not been able to do, trust what he tells us over the years. And yet they're still working with the city. So that's another reason for us to be skeptical. And during the time that the bill passed, we were not allowed, Mr. Williams will say, that citizens could not have the same options that Paul McKee could. Now that, you know, here we are again, he says that, but we were not doing, the meetings were before the board passed, that was not an option.